Let's talk about the New York Knicks here on any given Thursday by chat sports. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, we're rolling with it. We're going to keep this cut going. <laughs> oh He's my Chase. Goodness. I'm Harrison. Uh, our producer just whispered something in our ear, and it's. You got uh, to restart it's absolutely that cut. Man. Are we restart? Yeah, you got to uh, restart the cut. That? Oh my God, dude. <laughs> that is a bloodbath. It's uh, been one of those days. Oh man. All right, we'll try again. You ready? Any given Thursday by Chat Sports, Harrison Graham and Chase Sr. Let's get you guys caught up on the latest around the New York Knicks and kind of look back a little bit, Chase. Trade deadline obviously in the books for a while now. Sounds like they almost traded for Goran Dragic. We'll explore the buyout market, which includes Dragic here uh, in a few moments. But uh, is this a mistake to not go land a guy like Goran Dragic at the trade deadline? It is because they desperately need a point guard. And if you've watched the New York Knicks over the last couple of weeks, it has not been pretty. They have been going very quickly, very swiftly down a black diamond, and they're an amateur skier who doesn't know how to stop. It's Oof. been really ugly offensively. A couple of losses in which they've blown 20-plus point leads at MSG to been lose bad. a 28-point advantage to the Brooklyn Nets when Kevin Durant... Kyrie Irving and Ben Simmons aren't playing a straight up disgrace and late in games they seem to get so tight offensively and they just need a calming presence at the point guard position. Well, they almost pulled the trigger on Goran Dragic, and I think he would have been able to bring those attributes to the floor and calm things down offensively while giving you playoff experience, giving you leadership experience, and a guy who can also stretch the three and be reliable from beyond the arc. So this trade almost happened, according to Shams Charania, where the Knicks would have gotten Goran Dragic from the Toronto Raptors, a future second-round pick via Los Angeles. The Lakers would have received Cam Reddish, Alex, uh, Alec Burks, excuse Excuse me, Kem Birch and the Raptors, interestingly enough, would have gotten Talon Horton Tucker. I think the Knicks would have been the big winners in this trade. Cam Reddish isn't even playing because yeah. he's in Tom Thibodeau's what? doghouse. So that really confuses me and confounds it, me as well. If the Knicks were the team that derailed this trade, which not sure what happened on that front, what would they, would they really lose? Alec Burks? I mean, he's in his 30s. You don't need Alec Burks long term. Cam Reddish, I like him, but they don't, apparently, especially as long as Tibbs is the head coach. I mean, they... <laughs> This would have been a great trade for the Knicks, in my opinion. Yeah, because look, as I talked about, like you just watch the games, right? And you're like, man, what are they missing right now? Kemba Walker has just lost it athletically. I love Emmanuel quickly, but he's really streaky as a player. That consistent, calming demeanor of a presence at the point guard spot to just really relax the offense is really what the Knicks need. And it sets up everybody else nicely. R.J. Barrett, once he comes back off of injury, Julius Randle's game, I think, is able to expand. You run a little two-man game between Dragic and Mitchell Robinson. I like that component. Obi Toppin throwing down some alley-oops. They just don't have that guy right now. And really, they've missed Derrick Rose a lot this year, too. And I'll tell you what, man. When when the glue falls apart, when Derrick Rose goes down, that you, ain't good. You got problems, nope. man. That's just uh, that's just not a good thing. So uh, unfortunate this trade didn't go down, uh, but it did not. Would you have made this trade? We'll ask you, Nick fans out there, on this one. Type T for trader, P for pass. Ah, we don't need Goran Dragic. Uh, we're humming right now, uh, which is obviously sarcasm for me. T for trade, P for pass, and uh, coming up, we'll break it down some of those NBA buyout candidates. Let's get into our updated NBA buyout candidates, Chase. Goran Dragic has been bought out by the Spurs, so he is free to sign elsewhere. Uh, we'll see if and when he does sign. A lot of other names to keep in mind here as well. A lot of suitors for Dragic, who is an all-star with a bunch of playoff experience. I really think he's going to help move the needle for a playoff team out there, depending on where he does sign. John Wall could get bought out, but for him, making a lot of money this year, so does he agree to that buyout? Dennis Schroeder with the Houston Rockets after getting traded there in exchange for Daniel Tice from the Boston Celtics could also be a guard who can start or come in off the bench. I really like Gary Harris. Same can't be said for DJ Augustin, but Gary Harris is a really, really good player. And I think as a three-level scorer coming in off the bench would really give you good depth if he's bought out, if he signs with another team. Uh, Woj's team's in the mix. Uh, is this for uh, Dragic, Dragic uh, as we sit as of now? Brooklyn, Chicago, Golden State. Uh, also uh, the Clippers, Lakers, and Bucks. Now, 
People were like, hey, Drogic was at the Heat-Mavs game the other night. He played with the Heat forever. He's wanted to play with Luka Doncic. Ah, you never know. Maybe those teams are some dark horse possibilities. Uh, I do think he's for sure going to latch on with a contender chase uh, as we progress toward uh, that March 1st deadline. Yeah, and with some of those teams, Portland Trailblazers, you know, they trade away Norman Powell. He goes to the Clippers, but now he's out with that broken foot, so they're in need of a guard. I think that Dragic on the Lakers could really help them offensively, although Russell Westbrook last couple of games has been playing very well. Golden State, he gives you really good depth. Lonzo Ball still out. Alex Caruso turning the corner with his injury, but Dragic there seems like a solid fit as well. I think the New York Knicks should be in play for Dragic's services because they desperately need a point guard and somebody to just calm down the offense late in games. Just don't think he's going to sign with a non-contender and uh, yeah. the Knicks are not contending this year. John Wall doesn't sound like there's a lot of momentum for him to agree to a buyout. Of course, he's making over $40 million. There's another year on his contract worth $47 million. So, you know, we'll monitor that and see if something changes there. But uh, I don't anticipate him agreeing to a buyout. Maybe something happens this offseason via trade or uh, a buyout there. But uh, I think he's uh, just going to hang out this year. It was great to see him come back off a uh, off of a couple of injury plague seasons last year and play well with the Houston Rockets. Hasn't played a game at all this year after last campaign averaging 20 and a half points per game. Gives you a lot of the same athletic traits as a Russell Westbrook. Sometimes breathtaking in the open floor. Not the most efficient offensive player, but a guy who can really push the tempo, push the pace, and really play make for you. I want to see good players on the floor, and John Wall's a good player. We haven't seen him on the floor this year, though. Who is the best buyout guard that is out there. I, I think if John Wall became available, he's the answer. Dragic? Dragic for sure currently. Yeah. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Let us know what you guys think on this one, the best NBA buyout guard on the market. Now, we got some of the best hoodies available on sale for you guys at chatsports.com slash NBA hoodie. Hoodies for all 30 NBA teams, a lot of them on sale as well. Go check them out, chatsports.com slash NBA hoodie, whatever your favorite team is. Some of these player team combos, too, the Ja Morant with the Grizz logo on the front. That's a clean one as well. Different style jackets. I love this Hornets 30K look Ubre. as well. 30K Ubre. 30K uh, Ubre. Could be 40K soon. Who knows? Chatsports.com slash NBA hoodie. Go check them out. Whatever your favorite team is, they'll have something for you. Link will be in the comments and in the description of this video. Uh, let's go to the wing spot, Chase. Uh, a few names to keep in mind here. I think this is the weakest position group of the NBA buyout candidates. I frankly don't like any of these players. At one point, I was a fan of Jeremy Lamb, but this year he's been awful he's as evidenced off. by the numbers we're about to show you. Rodney Hood just doesn't really do much for me. Kevin Knox, a bona fide first round bust, got traded to the Atlanta Hawks in that trade for Cam Ruddish. Neither of those players are playing. Thomas Sadoransky gives you a little bit of size at that wing spot. Kent Bazemore, I think his best days are behind yeah, him as well. Finished. Now, Jeremy Lamb certainly has pedigree. He's been in the league for a long while. He's had a couple of good moments, a couple of good years, but this year, Hasn't really played all that well. Seven points per game, two and a half boards, 37% from the field, and sub 34% from distance. You take a look at a player like him, you compare him with the Kevin Knox. Do you take an opportunity and a chance and a swing at Kevin Knox, who's the younger player, but hasn't been able to show anything? I think Tom Thibodeau not playing him early in his NBA career has really impacted his confidence. It's weird. Knox's first year, year and a half. Wasn't bad. Looked like a guy who would be a solid rotation player but once Tibbs got in there he was not a Tibbs guy has not been the same um, you know Jeremy Lamb like you mentioned uh, is certainly a guy who's had a couple of good years has been a floor spacer but you've kind of seen that a lot this year in the NBA guys just having down shooting years due to the new rules some say the new basketball I don't know how much I buy into that at this point in the season but uh, I tend to agree I think this position group is definitely among the weaker ones uh, when you look at some of these buyout candidates will Kevin Knox ever workout will he ever turn into something type y for yes type in for no i hope he's at least hitting the gym uh, right J producer jeremy at least at least work out once or twice a week i hope he's doing that y for yes in for no will he ever turn into something uh, I hope we're working out at Chat Sports. I think we're doing pretty well. We're closing in on 280,000 subscribers. We're actually less than 200 away. Hey, maybe we can get there on this video. Hit that sub button. Uh, spread the word. Let's get to 280,000 subscribers. If you want more NBA coverage, we are the channel for you here on YouTube. 
Uh, we'll keep it moving here on today's uh, buyout candidates video. Uh, let's look at some of the bigs here. Uh, a hot name right now, Chase, is Robin Lopez. Yeah. I think he'll have some suitors. No, and of the position groups here, we talked about the wings being the weakest, Harris, and I think the NBA buyout bigs the strongest of these position groups. Yeah, you can say that Goran Dragic, John Wall are very good guards, but the depth here and the players that you can get for teams who are front court needy, I think these guys are very good options. Robin Lopez, Juan Hernan Gomez, Paul Millsap, we'll see if he hangs on with Philadelphia. Did play poorly in his debut in that blowout loss against the Boston Celtics. DeAndre Jordan, I just don't think he can really give you much as a center who can't do anything except hang around and hover around the basket. DeMarcus Cousins in spurts on some nights can be a pretty solid playmaker. You look at what Robin Lopez has been able to do this year, I think he's the top big who could be made available by far, averaging almost eight points per game, high level defense, solid rebounder, decent rim protector, shooting around 57% from the floor. He is a career around 70% free throw shooter, that number sub 60 this year. But for a playoff team, if you're able to bring in Robin Lopez as your backup big, I'm talking about yeah. the Golden State Warriors of the world, and he can be a backup to Kavon Looney and James Wiseman, if Wiseman continues to struggle getting back onto the court, Robin Lopez could be a very, very nice player there. I think even a team like Dallas, who needs some Dallas, rim protection. Dallas, Philadelphia behind Joel Embiid. Yeah, Kristaps Porzingis, I think he could certainly help there. So I think he's a guy that's going to be able to uh, pick uh, from a variety of teams, assuming he does get bought out. Some other players, uh, maybe some lesser names, but still some guys that – are out there, of course, Derek Favors, Ennis Cantor, Freedom, uh, of course, who's been who got traded by Boston, then bought out by Houston. He's available. Gorgie Dieng, Moses Brown, who got waived by the Mavericks. Drew Eubanks is out there. A little lesser name here, but a guy like Derek Favors, Chase, uh, he's not having the year this year, but he's had years in his career where he's averaged basically double doubles. I think he could definitely be a backup big, and I get a team like Utah, who's who's very familiar with him. Uh, would certainly be interested in bringing him on board. Yeah, no doubt. You know, he's playing for the Oklahoma City Thunder now, but at 30 years old, it's pretty crazy to think that this guy was drafted number three overall back in 2010 and never really lived up to those lofty expectations from when he was drafted out of Georgia Tech. A lot of people expected him to be one of the best bigs in the NBA. Instead of that, he's been steady. He's been consistent. He's been somewhat serviceable. There's a youth movement in OKC, and that's why his numbers are down. Still getting around 17 minutes per game, five points per five rebounds, shooting around 52% from the floor. He's not going to stretch his game out to the three-point arc, but if you want a rebounder, if you want an energetic presence, if you want a veteran who a lot of people respect and a pretty solid defender, Derek Favors can bring that to the floor. So who is the buyout big that's the most talented? Who do you like the most? Let us know. I, I think it's Lopez because he's an instant Incredible defender. Yeah, me too. I mean, 15 minutes off the bench for a contender, I think, you know, it's similar to like a JaVale McGee in Phoenix, right? Like, just score around the rim and play defense. Like, that's that's all you really need out of him. Let us know who is the most, uh, the best big on the buyout market.